everybody today. Um, thank you all for joining us for the second talk in our UW Data Science Seminar Series for the 2020-2021 year. Um, as a reminder, we'll hold questions to the end of the talk um, and we'll be using the moderated Q&A button on the bottom of your Zoom window to ask questions of the speaker. Um, so feel free to drop those in throughout the presentation and then um, Professor Se will address those at the end of the talk. Um, so we're delighted today um, to have Professor Se joining us. Um, he's currently an assistant professor at UW Bothell in computer and software systems and the principal investigator of data analysis and intelligent systems uh, or DAIS. Do you have you do you pronounce that in a fun way? <laughs> yeah, DICE. DICE, oh nice, yeah. research group. Um, he received his PhD in computer science from Old Dominion University. Um, his research areas are focused on developing and using machine learning and data mining techniques to solve problems in medicine and social science. Um, some examples of the research areas that he works in include social network analysis, medical imaging, and work on specific diseases, including Parkinson's, depression, and SARS-CoV-2. Today, Professor Say will talk about developing DeepTracer, um, which is a fully automatic deep learning based method for determining the structure of protein complexes, which is extremely relevant in the fight against COVID. Thank you, Professor, and welcome. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, yeah, so today I'm going to give you guys a talk on the fast, accurate, and fully automatic de novo protein complex prediction from 3D Crowd EM. This is our uh, uh, new fun research fundings uh, just uh, happened uh, in this year, latest uh, news. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, uh, turn off the video because I'm going to look at my desktop and I'm using the iPad for the audio. So uh, I will save uh, the uh, internet resource and I will turn on the video back when we do the Q&A session. Okay. <clears throat> so we can focus on the slides. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, just a brief introduction of myself. I'm an uh, uh, assistant professor at the uh, Common Science Division at the UW Bathel, and uh, we are data analysis in intelligent system group. Our research interests uh, right now involve uh, uh, geometric deep learning, artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, more specifically, we are right now using artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, to model the uh, molecule structures from Crow EM. <clears throat> okay, just give you some introduction and uh, background knowledge and motivation. Uh, everybody uh, knows this picture, and you have seen this picture from many places on the newspaper, on the media, internet. <clears throat> This is not a real SARS-CoV-2, but this is an artist's uh, rendering, um, <clears throat> which is uh, pretty cute and uh, uh, neat. But if you look at the real science database, uh, scientific resources, uh, for example, the electron microscopy data resource, uh, <clears throat> there are many of uh, these uh, real uh, pictures or images, or we call it uh, uh, maps. Uh, <clears throat> Ever since uh, February uh, this year, when uh, there uh, was the uh, <clears throat> first uh, crowd electronic map being posted to the data resource, uh, people have seen a lot of uh, uh, density maps uh, for the uh, SARS-CoV-2 and also for the human uh, proteins, human cells. And uh, just uh, last uh, couple weeks ago, I think, uh, uh, September uh, 16, uh, the first uh, uh, <clears throat> authentic SARS-CoV-2 virus entire picture, entire three-dimensional picture or image uh, was deposited to the data bank. And this uh, was the first, uh, one of the first uh, uh, <clears throat> authentic SARS-CoV-2 image. So if you compare this one with the um, previous uh, uh, artist's rendering, it's quite uh, uh, different. <clears throat> okay, and um, this is uh, how we visualize the locally on the desktop when we download this uh, three-dimensional image and uh, visualized by a visualization tool uh, called Camera. It's actually a, 
uh, grayscale and density uh, <clears throat> image and uh, uh, without uh, any color. And this is the uh, artist rendering and from that you, you can see the spike protein, uh, which people talk uh, a lot uh, these days. Uh, because the spike protein is like the, uh, the key uh, that knocks the door of your human cell and uh, uh, break through the human cell membrane and uh, uh, make you sick and uh, uh, got this uh, disease. So <clears throat> uh, there are a lot of proteins on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 on the uh, different viruses and also uh, inside of uh, the uh, virus. Uh, during the past decades and in the last century, a lot of scientists and engineers uh, have been trying to <clears throat> solve the structure of the uh, viral proteins and other very important proteins because uh, if we know the structure, we all know how it uh, function. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the three major uh, technology in the past century and right now are these uh, X-ray, NMR, and the cryo-EM. From left to the right, uh, and from the traditional ones to the uh, new emerging technology that we are going to uh, focus on the, in today's talk. The X-ray is very uh, good at uh, solving atomic resolutions, but uh, uh, the this technology has its own limitation because you have to make very good crystal and it really is very time consuming and uh, um, need a lot of human labor. <clears throat> and NMR is good on um, um, solving the structure also, but uh, it, it has its own limitation on the size of the uh, molecule it can solve and also the resolution due to the uh, technology cannot reach to very high. <clears throat> so to complement uh, to the previous traditional technologies, people have been thinking of uh, ways to uh, shoot a very high resolution image, 3D image, and also in a very efficient, fast, and cheap way. So that's uh, CrowEM. It uh, came to us uh, uh, <clears throat> two decades ago, around two decades ago, and uh, Five years ago, um, on the Journal of Nature, uh, it was marked as uh, the um, um, uh, revolution to shape the future of uh, molecular medicine. Uh, not too, uh, <clears throat> uh, not uh, uh, not too long later, and uh, just uh, I think two years later after uh, 2015, um, around this time, around autumn the Nobel Prize of Chemistry was awarded to three pioneers in the cryo-EM uh, technology. Uh, <clears throat> they shared this prize in uh, 2017 for uh, developing the cryo-EM, uh, developing the cryo-electron microscopy uh, for the high resolution structure determination. So if we look at this uh, picture uh, from the uh, Nobel Prize website, and uh, uh, before uh, 2013, we see the resolution was uh, not that good. Uh, you see uh, this kind of a point cloud or um, um, <clears throat> a very uh, blobbed uh, regions. Uh, just after several, like uh, five years later, uh, the resolution becomes very uh, high. Right now, we, we are seeing <clears throat> atomic level resolution features from the CrowEM, which is a, a very cool uh, uh, technology. Okay, so this is an example picture uh, I took from uh, the uh, CrowEM website uh, to give you a, a, <clears throat> a brief uh, overview of uh, uh, what is the CrowEM and what is the uh, technology. Uh, this machine is very huge, as you can see from the picture. And uh, it's not a traditional uh, microscopy, but a uh, uh, electron microscopy. And in a, a very um, <clears throat> uh, huge equipment. And the people shoot electron beams to the sample and uh, we can have uh, a collection of uh, two dimensional projections. And uh, uh, from that, we can do the three dimensional reconstruction we can use mathematical and computational way to reconstruct the three-dimensional sample. Uh, 
for example, like this. So the reason uh, for doing this, as I mentioned before, we want to study the structure of uh, different uh, uh, molecular uh, machines and uh, uh, <clears throat> we want to understand uh, what is the uh, real structure uh, under the uh, surface uh, inside of the volume. <clears throat> so for example, if we look at the, the surface uh, spike protein, uh, and uh, on the other hand, we have uh, the genetic, uh, the amino acid sequence encoded from the genetic sequence. So combine this one dimensional sequence information and the three dimensional image information, we can do a lot of uh, uh, data mining, machine learning and uh, uh, prediction. We right now use uh, computer vision techniques on the three dimensional space and we also use text mining, uh, dynamic programming and also we are trying to use natural language processing to and reinforcement learning to better make uh, the prediction from the sequence. So if we can predict well, and we will see this kind of uh, uh, atomic structure, uh, by having this atomic structure, uh, the pharmaceutical people and uh, uh, biotech people will be able to design the drugs or vaccines. So when we take the drugs or vaccines, uh, uh, <clears throat> it will be able to, the chemical uh, 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 stuff will be able to bind to the, the virus and uh, stop the function of the virus. So we can uh, <clears throat> be cured. So this is the, the big picture or the entire story. As the computational uh, guy, we are focusing on these uh, steps, which is called a de novo protein structure prediction or ab initio protein structure prediction. This is a very, very um, important uh, uh, problem. It was uh, marked on the Journal of Science as one of the top 125 outstanding scientific problems in the uh, 21st century, uh, which is to predict the protein structure from scratch. <clears throat> okay, so Let's go back to the Pearl Yam. Uh, we can show the image by using Pearl Yam, and uh, there are a lot of uh, images, uh, raw 2D images, and also three dimensional reconstructed uh, volumes uh, in the data bank. <clears throat> if you look at the statistics, there are a lot of uh, data, and uh, the uh, data uh, is growing very fast, especially if you look at uh, the uh, growth rate uh, in the recent years. <clears throat> we have a lot of uh, uh, crowd EM uh, maps being deposited to the data bank. And uh, less than half of the data has uh, have been uh, modeled either manually by the structure biologists, biochemists, or by using other uh, tools. <clears throat> and if you look at the resolution level, uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, near atomic resolution level, which is the yellow bar here, uh, three, uh, around three uh, to four uh, angstrom resolution. A little tiny green here shows you, uh, um, I'm sorry, a uh, little tiny uh, blue, yeah, blue here shows you very high resolution, which is the atomic resolution, okay. Uh, this year, I think around summer, uh, people were able to shoot uh, the crowd EM maps with uh, uh, around one angstrom resolution, which means that they can see the hydrogen atom directly from crowd EM, which is very cool. <clears throat> but uh, based on the current uh, data, uh, we noticed that a lot of data is around this uh, resolution level, around two to uh, five resolution level, and a lot of uh, maps ha have not been solved, have not been solve the waste the structure. So we are thinking, uh, can we uh, develop some uh, computational tools to do uh, this prediction in a fast, accurate, and efficient way without uh, uh, not too much of the uh, human intervention, something like that. This is very important because if you look at the uh, drug discovery uh, cycle, uh, when we do this uh, uh, development, it will help a lot with the, uh, the drug disco discovery or um, uh, uh, develop the drug candidate. 
So traditionally, people do a lot of uh, wet lab uh, experiments and do a lot of screening or uh, high throughput uh, test. Uh, but if we can utilize the machine learning, data mining, uh, and uh, computational modeling, it will uh, speed up this process. Uh, we can do the prediction and modeling from scratch uh, in a very faster speed, that, uh, which, which is unprecedented. Okay, so there are a lot of technologies being involved in this cycle. You can see machine learning, you can see modeling, you can see um, uh, computer vision, graphics, uh, and uh, we will uh, break down this and uh, uh, talk about it in, in the uh, next few slides. <clears throat> okay, so our goal is by having um, <clears throat> the crowd EM map of uh, uh, molecule or macromolecule. We are trying to um, do this uh, prediction and modeling to determine the atomic level structure uh, from scratch. Uh, we use the genetic sequence to guide us to put uh, this uh, <clears throat> atomic, atomic level and amino acid level uh, information in, onto the 3D. So you, as you can see on the bottom, uh, this is an example of our recent work in SANA that we were able to um, <clears throat> efficiently model the uh, atomic structure of a very large comp protein complex. <clears throat> and you can see a lot of details. Okay, <clears throat> so for example, this is a, a high resolution crowd EM map, and, uh, um, which can, uh, we can have near atomic resolution, and uh, we can show the, the Im image of a very large complex. So the problem is how can we build the models uh, from this crowd EM volume? <clears throat> okay, you can visualize the volume, um, but uh, it's really challenging to place or to um, model every single atom, every single amino acid directly from this three-dimensional uh, volume. So talking about a volume or three-dimensional image or any density uh, image, uh, <clears throat> we have an uh, issue with res resolution. <clears throat> if you visualize the, the volume into a visualization tool and you play with the histogram bar, uh, which is the threshold, and you can see um, the uh, voxels, volume pixel, will be showing up at different level. <clears throat> So it's really challenging because in the uh, real experimental data, uh, you, you can see the, these voxels, but uh, most of time, most of the time, you can see a lot of background noises, a lot of uh, times you, you can see the missing density due to the artifact uh, in the imaging process. So uh, to be able to accurately model the atoms from these uh, uh, voxels, are re is really challenging. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in the nature, we have protein structure. Uh, we have a uh, uh, chance of a protein structure to form the complex. And on every chain, we have a, a sequence of amino acids. So this is the basic uh, uh, biology uh, background knowledge. Uh, so our goal is to accurately um, <clears throat> predict the uh, amino acid sequence and uh, also the atomic level structure from the three-dimensional crowd EM map. We do this uh, software engineering and uh, programming and uh, to try to model the atomic structures. We break down this entire uh, protein structure complex into uh, tertiary structure, into multi-chains, into then into single chain, and then we look at uh, every amino acid on the single chain, and then we look at every atom on the amino acid level. So we can do um, this hierarchical analysis and uh, model building. And of course, on the amino acid level, we, we have the back, backbone structure, uh, this uh, NCCO and also the side chains. So we will talk about how we build all this in the following um, pipeline. Okay, this is a visualization of uh, the secondary structure. 
uh, helix and uh, beta strat and uh, the loop uh, in between of them. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the final problem statement, um, by having a, a, a large cryo em map and uh, the corresponding uh, amino acid sequence encoded from genetic sequence, we want to uh, predict or model the complete, uh, complete uh, atomic structure uh, from the cryo-EM EM map and sequence. <clears throat> so here we introduce you the deep tracer. Deep tracer is able to uh, accurately, uh, efficiently, and effectively uh, model the atomic structure from cryo-EM map and amino acid sequence. <clears throat> because we noticed uh, there are some limitations in the existing uh, structure determination method. For example, sometimes the accuracy uh, is limited due to the quality of cryo map. Uh, sometimes uh, if you use uh, this method, you have uh, to put uh, some menu, uh, to put some parameters and use some menu adjustment and processing uh, to be able to perform the modeling. And uh, sometimes you have to have prior knowledge of the structure and uh, of the model uh, in order to accurately uh, predict the uh, structure. <clears throat> so to uh, complement uh, to the, these limitations and to build a fully automated tool, uh, we introduced the deep tracer. We are trying to achieve the goal of uh, high accuracy, uh, high effectiveness and the performance and a good usability. That's why we build a web server for the public access. So we have several steps uh, uh, involved in the deep tracer pipeline. And I'm going to just uh, uh, show you the, uh, <clears throat> the idea on every step, but not uh, go to too much of the detail. Uh, for more information, you can go to our uh, preprint uh, manuscript or contact us. Okay, for, um, by having a three-dimensional volume, uh, <clears throat> aka uh, uh, voxels uh, on the volume, we need to do some pre-processing in order to have a uh, uh, reduced noise and high quality uh, map. So we refine the voxels to, uh, in order to interpret more details and also we look at uh, the density, the, uh, the intensity of the voxel. And we are trying to do some normalization as you all learned from uh, data science that uh, uh, by having the data, we want to uh, <clears throat> filter out some uh, outliers or noises. So we, we did some normalization and try to uh, normalize all the uh, densities uh, among different maps and make it smooth and uh, <clears throat> Uh, good. And next, we uh, utilize the uh, neural network deep learning uh, <clears throat> uh, frameworks. And we uh, design our own uh, framework uh, based on previous uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> we download the, the training data, uh, which we can fetch, uh, fetch from the data bank. Uh, because in the data bank, we have uh, less than half of the density map of the crowd yank. Yeah, map that uh, uh, previous scientists, they either manually or semi-automatically uh, model the structure. Uh, so we have this uh, um, cryo map and the structure pair. Uh, so we can label every voxel. And then we uh, feed the data to um, <clears throat> deep learning type uh, libraries to try to train a deep learning model to understand the the relationship between the voxels and uh, the atomic structure features. Okay, we train the machine learning model, deep learning model, uh, based on different uh, level of uh, features. We look at the tertiary structure level, we look at the backbone level, we look at the atomic level, we look at the secondary structure level. We look at the amino acid level. So we designed a uh, uh, <clears throat> model based on multi-levels of uh, features. 
and we integrate these different uh, levels of features into a single artificial neural network, deep artificial neural network, and trying to predict different level of features. <clears throat> and of course, the, uh, the backbone uh, trees, the uh, <clears throat> backbone atoms are the most important ones because it determines the geometry or stru overall structure of the, uh, the protein. So we look at uh, the backbone uh, atoms predictions uh, uh, specifically, and uh, the um, <clears throat> C alpha atom is the most important one on the, ad, uh, on the back, uh, backbone. So we um, took out the C alpha confidence map. You can uh, view the confidence map as uh, uh, a filter out uh, map. And we are trying to uh, understand uh, how we can connect these predicted uh, C alpha atoms, the most important atoms on the backbone. We utilized a very uh, classic uh, uh, traveling salesman problem uh, solver to try to connect the C alpha atoms. <clears throat> but if you uh, directly look at the, the C alpha atoms, um, it's really challenging to find the connection. Uh, if you simply uh, use the TSP, it uh, won't work. But uh, luckily, we have the Crow-Yan map, which can help us with finding the connections. So while we are using the uh, traveling salesman uh, problem solver, and also um, we look at the density, the voxels, the Crow-Yan map. <clears throat> we look at uh, the distance, we look at uh, the uh, backbone connection, we look at the geometry in the 3D, <clears throat> try to connect the C alpha backbone atoms. On the other hand, we know we have the um, amino acid sequence, the ge genetic information. So uh, <clears throat> once we have the C alpha atoms, uh, we have to uh, map this genetic sequence onto the 3D locations. So we know which C alpha atom is for which amino acid specifically. <clears throat> so we utilize the dynamic programming and optimization uh, algorithms, tailored uh, optimization uh, algorithms to do this uh, sequence alignment or you can say sequence uh, assignment. And uh, this is a uh, a rough prediction after mapping the sequence and uh, finding the, uh, uh, the backbone atoms, uh, the carbon, carbon alpha, and nitrogen. <clears throat> and we did a final refinement uh, before building the side chains. We look at the density again and utilize the structural geometry uh, learned from the uh, biological structures, existing biological structures, and we did the refinement, as you can see from this example. <clears throat> Try to make it following the principles of uh, uh, structural biology. And then finally, we plug in the side chain uh, on the backbone. We use a third party uh, squirrel, which is a very um, popular tool to add the side chains and also check the collisions after uh, adding the side chain. Okay, so till now we have um, <clears throat> all the atoms uh, that have been modeled, predicted uh, from scratch from the crow yan and the amino, amino acid sequence. Okay. <clears throat> okay, to give you a demo, you can um, actually um, play with Deep Tracer uh, locally on your desktop or smartphone. We have the mobile version. Uh, uh, responsive de design, you can load the website on your little tiny screen of the smart smartphone. And if you click the link, you will be directed to our homepage of uh, Deep Tracer. And uh, the Deep Tracer, as I mentioned, launched uh, in uh, July, and uh, we observed uh, uh, visits from researchers uh, all around the world. And uh, as an example, you can click on this, uh, our modeling on the coronavirus related predictions. You can look at uh, 
the uh, predict structure from um, the web browser directly. You can uh, drag, play, zoom in, and uh, look at every single atom. On the left is the uh, previously modeled structure that uh, uh, deposited to the data bank by the structure biologist. And you can compare with our structure. Uh, <clears throat> and you can download it. You can see the evaluation. And uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, examples also on the uh, web page. And some of them you can see even without uh, deposited models that we can compare. That means we suggest the atomic uh, structures uh, that uh, uh, nobody else can um, <clears throat> have model being deposited uh, to the data bank. If you want to play with your own data, uh, you can click on this run prediction. It will ask you to submit the uh, Crown-Yen map and also the amino acid sequence. The solved structure is optional. As I mentioned, this is for you to compare with the previous solved structure. <clears throat> and you will get email notification when it's done. Normally, it's very fast. It depends on the size of the sample. Okay, so the blue is the, deep, the result from deep tracer and uh, the uh, yellow gold is the result from the previously deposited structure in the data bank. You can see we have uh, uh, predict very well and uh, we can find actually the one to one matching with the manually uh, modeled structure. And we compared our method with the state of art uh, method that uh, has been widely used in the um, <clears throat> community, the Phoenix. Uh, we show that uh, our uh, performance in terms of accuracy and efficiency um, is uh, better than Phoenix. And most uh, importantly, our uh, computational time is far more <clears throat> better than the, uh, the current uh, state-of-art methods. We can uh, predict very large complex, for example, uh, <clears throat> over uh, 180,000 uh, number of amino acids with a very short period of time. <clears throat> And we sent uh, our two to the uh, colleagues uh, in the community uh, to ask for feedback and suggestions um, uh, to quote from the uh, two scientists in, in Spain, in the Pro-EM community. They tried our method and uh, 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 they speak uh, <clears throat> very high on this uh, work. We are very glad that they can also provide the, us the feedback and make us to improve our current uh, result. And uh, um, a scientist from uh, the uh, Phoenix group actually <laughs> even um, um, <clears throat> commented, uninvitedly commented on our work um, August, in August and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, give us the comment and feedback. And uh, Deep Tracer right now is archived on the uh, EM data bank and uh, um, marked as the automated mo model building in Cloud EM. Uh, we, again, we are trying to achieve uh, the goal of uh, fully automation. <clears throat> if you compare it with uh, uh, Phoenix and uh, Rosetta, the, the current state of art method, our method, again, is uh, just one click. And also, I just want to mention in our paper, if you want, want to look at more comparison, you can see we also compare with Rosetta and MinMast, not only Phoenix. Okay. <clears throat> so these are the uh, publications and preprints uh, related to Deep Tracer, related to this work, specific work. And uh, uh, we want to also Thank this opportunity. Uh, uh, take this opportunity to thank U University of Washington and the National Science Foundation 
uh, for supporting our uh, research and project. And we also want to thank different uh, uh, media uh, for uh, <clears throat> reporting our uh, research findings. And uh, I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, my appreciation to the Deep Tracer team, especially the, uh, the team leader, uh, Jonas, who contributed a lot in this uh, uh, research. Okay, again, future directions. So we want to achieve more accurate goals. For some local uh, areas, we still are struggling and uh, uh, with the modeling because of the quality of density missing of uh, the voxels. It's really challenging always with dealing with the experimental data. We want to make a deep tracer more versatile uh, <clears throat> to be able to model different uh, molecular structures. And also we want to extend uh, deep tracer to other biomedical uh, imaging data. So we're looking for, again, also collaborations. And these are the references I used uh, uh, in my presentation. And uh, this is, uh, these are the pictures of uh, the ice group that we were uh, having meeting, gathering, and uh, party. And uh, thank you so much again uh, for your attention. And uh, pl please let me know if you have any questions. Don, thank you so much. This was a fascinating presentation. Thank you thank so you. much. Um, yeah. You have a question, please, if you have other questions, please uh, place them in the Q&A se uh, section. Mm -hmm. um, I, can, um, I can read this one that we have. Uh, it says, uh, compared to Rosetta from Professor David Baker, uh, for protein structure prediction, what are the strengths of deep tracer developed in your group? That's a very good question. I think this question might have popped up before I uh, remarked uh, the comparison to Phoenix, uh, Rosetta, and MinMast. Again, <clears throat> deep tracer is a fully automated uh, uh, pipeline with only one click. Uh, one click on the uh, web server, you see the end-to-end -end result. Uh, we tried the Rosetta, we tried the Min Master, we also tried Phoenix. Uh, they are uh, not fully automated and uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes they require uh, specific parameters in order to get the uh, accurate result. And uh, the, the, the other big difference is uh, the uh, computational time. Uh, with uh, large complex, we were able to run using uh, minutes or uh, uh, very short period of time to to make the modeling and uh, which is a, a huge improvement compared to the traditional modeling uh, computational modeling method or a physics modeling method like you said thank you thank you thanks uh, here's another question from David uh, mm -hmm. What is the upper representation when you are making the prediction of the CA coordinates? Does Deep Tracer predict a 2D distance map of all CA CA distances and then post processing like multi dimensional scaling allows you to extract Euclidean coordinates of CA atoms? Or does Deep Tracer directly predict 3D point clouds in Euclidean space? Thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, to directly answer this question, yes, Deep Tracer uh, predict the 3D uh, locations directly from the Euclidean 3D space. Thank you. I have a question I'm yeah. curious about, like you compare your prediction with something else. That's mm -hmm. something else, what is it? Like how do you have that other structure you're comparing your prediction? With? Oh. <clears throat> so, I mean, how do we compare with the the uh, uh, the other structure, the solved structure, the model structure? Or your question is, uh, what are those models or yes, structures? yeah, how, <laughs> is the how, truth? <laughs> how, yeah, or you can 
called true structure or ground truth. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I, I prefer not to, to uh, call them ground truth because uh, um, as uh, 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 <clears throat> researchers, we are always uh, uh, infinitely approaching to the ground truth, but not uh, uh, exactly <laughs> uh, uh, find the ground truth. But uh, those previously modeled uh, and uh, um, solve the structure are from are from in some of them are from X-ray technology. <clears throat> uh, the X-ray people can uh, model the uh, very uh, high resolution atomic uh, structures using X-ray uh, crystallography, as I mentioned. So some of our predictions we compare with the X-ray structures, and some of the model previous model structures from the structural biologist. Uh, where uh, when they do the homology modeling, uh, for example, for <clears throat> for a new map where uh, uh, which we do do not have a structure, but uh, they can find the homologies uh, by looking at the sequence. Uh, <clears throat> for example, SARS-CoV-2, we can find the homologies with SARS-CoV. Uh, although the structure of SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV are not exactly the same, but they can do manual docking, uh, manual fitting to fit the previously solved uh, uh, homology structure to this new density map to do some manual fitting. <clears throat> so some of the model structures are coming from uh, those, those structure biologists. I hope this uh, answered your question. Yeah, I was just curious. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, here's a follow-up no question from David. I think that's the last one I have. Um, what allows Deep Tracer to handle mm -hmm. inputs, outputs of different lengths and sizes? Uh, different lengths and the size. I mean, different lengths probably means a different length of uh, the sequence, I guess. Different size means different size of the probably yeah, yeah, map. If I, I'm trying to. Um, get a confirmation from David. <clears throat> so uh, again, we do not uh, uh, require the, um, the previous knowledge on the size or lens. Uh, you can submit, a, you can try deep tracer with a, a different size of uh, uh, ground map and uh, <clears throat> the corresponding amino acid. Um, <clears throat> So um, again, we are trying to model uh, the protein complex. Uh, if you submit a, a very uh, complex uh, map with the amino acid sequence, make sure the FASTA sequence is using the standard uh, uh, multi-chain uh, <clears throat> format. Uh, you can have a, a very huge FASTA sequence. Make sure you mark uh, different chains following the faster format. So it can be very long and uh, the uh, Cronian map could be very huge. Uh, again, if you submit a huge task, a huge job, it uh, may require our server to run uh, <clears throat> a longer time compared with a, a small map and a short se sequence. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. David says, yes, mostly different lengths of sequences. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we can take different lengths of sequences. Excellent. So I don't see other questions. I would like to thank you again for your excellent presentation today. And um, for the class, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.